No, I think the topics are, we, are um, coming, yeah. the ones that I wanted to ask. But he already asked the question, and then he talks about himself so much anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't get time to like ask the question. It's my time to shine. Like, blah, 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 blah. Hey guys, welcome to Outspoken, the series where I interview a different rider at every race. And this time we switched. We went to the women's side, and we have Tanya Seagrave. <laughs> so I'm happy to see her back. She's not racing this weekend. But she's here to talk a little bit with us, so I hope uh, she has a lot of things to say. And um, <laughs> yeah, what are you doing here? Um, I just wanted to get back in the scene. Okay. Like, I love it so much and seeing you and everyone, it's nice. It's where I belong, so yeah, yeah, it's cool. But um, I will never forget you, that's what <laughs> But you say on Instagram that you will do some yeah. new stuff this weekend. Yeah, okay. some media stuff. Okay, just... Yeah, just some stuff for Red Bull. Okay. Yeah going to watch you on track, okay. video you guys. I feel like it's, it's kind of trendy to have riders like Elliot at yeah. the moment, like kind of the inside of, a, of yeah. a rider for the spectator. It's pretty cool, so maybe it's, it's going to be nice that you do something like yeah, this. Yeah, I'm going to actually do some stuff with Elliot. Ah, so. see? But I feel like it's good because riders open up more, like you and me now. Mm, yeah, yeah, like yeah. It's just because you know someone. So yeah, I feel true. like I can maybe get some, some cool stuff. It's, it's, I don't know why Radio starts to do that, because yeah. also Dino is yeah, doing his podcast. podcast. Yeah. So I, I don't know if we don't have enough... We're scared we won't have a job anymore. Maybe, you know what? <laughs> Trying maybe. to open up for opportunities. <laughs> yeah, if there is any employer <laughs> that's looking yeah. for a job. But no, it's, it's good that we have other ways to talk and yeah, about what sure. we think and stuff. But uh, it's the first time you had... You've been injured before, you had a mm -hmm. uh, femur. Yeah, I broke my femur. Yeah. yeah, but when you were pretty young. Yeah, I was like 14, so. But since that, you'd never had a massive injury like you had in Phobia? Yeah. <laughs> like you had bigger ones. But yeah, I've had small ones, but like I said, they've never put me out for more than a week. Yeah. And I've never missed more than like one race. So how, so. how do you feel now that you've missed race, like two races, a lot of weeks? I of feel like I'm missing out for sure. <laughs> I'm just, I don't know, I love racing, so for me, that's, that's my life, like, so it's, it's quite nice, it's like kind of set me back and be like, well, like there is more to life than just racing your bike, so in a way it's kind of been a good, a good learning curve, I guess. And what did you do in your time off, except being depressed maybe? Yeah, I was depressed for about a day. Yeah, I've just sure. tried so hard to stay positive and I think that almost made me more depressed because okay. I was trying so hard and then like you get to a point where there's, there's only, like, you can only be so positive mm -hmm. and then but on your I had post, a cry. Yeah, for sure. But on your post after your injury, you sounded almost, I, it's, I know it's Instagram. Relieved. <laughs> no, no, not relieved but excited for the, yeah. this well, chapter. Yeah, because it's you know? never happened and I always see riders, like I've seen you injure yourself. Yeah. I've seen Rachel do it a million times and I've never kind of had that opportunity to show that I can go away and come back. Okay. So I read, I'm excited, I want to show that I can come back and for me that's so exciting. So you, you can come back? At yeah, for name. sure. Because you were wearing number one plate in yeah. the podium. <laughs> Not for long. Not for long, <laughs> I know, but still, it's, it's a yeah. good, it was a good start of the season Yeah. and you know you were on the top of your game. So you think you can come back to that top? I feel like Maribor for me, my, wasn't my strongest like it was still like stepping stones like, I wasn't sure so I feel like now I've got the time to yeah. kind of I just wasn't ready in Maribor so, so to it's take the win then. there yeah, yeah it was mad okay and I've never won the opening round so you know what it's like the first yeah. race is like you have no idea you, it's, it's stressful you just yeah and you don't really know where you're at yeah you just look a little bit around you're like oh you. my god I'm so slow like everyone's mm. so much faster I know. so yeah, I'm hoping that I can come back and prove, you know, it would be so good to just prove that I, I can go away with an injury and come back and still be as strong as I was. And mm -hmm. I think it's more self-satisfaction, though, proving to myself that I can do it. And when will you come back? It's a bit soon to say, but I really, I really want to be back for Worlds. Okay. Um, I've never really, I've never done well at Worlds, unlike you. <laughs> Um, if so, you need some advice, you know? yeah, please. <laughs> I don't even know. No, I don't know. I've never like focused on welds or anything. I okay. always kind of like. Why? Don't know. It's it's not a big thing for you to be a world champion. Yeah, of course it is. 
So why did you put him aside? Because it scares me. I don't know. <laughs> I guess like my first experience at Worlds when I was a junior, yeah. my first year, I thought, yeah, I've got this. Like, because I won everything. Like, it was. But before that, when growing up, you you maybe remember a girl called Sandra Rigny. Yeah. She used to beat me all the time, like I know. a minute. And then like the time kind of got like short and short, and I just kept pushing. And then one day I beat her. And then from then on, I won for a, quite a long time. But there wasn't much competition. Mm -hmm. And then I got to Worlds and Holly Fenyak. True. Yeah, I Canadian remember. turned up, and like just smashed it, like fully, like just kicked me in the ass and was like. You need to get off your high It horse. was in Leo Gang, no? Mm -hmm. I remember. Yeah, 2012. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it crushed me, for sure. Like, and since then you have a trauma, trauma with it. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> but it made me like, like I won the, the following year against her again. So yeah. that was cool for me. But I haven't like, well, I've been, how long have we been in the leap for? I don't even know. You are one, yeah. less year, <laughs> one year less than me, but like, Seven for me and six. Yeah, so six. Yeah. So like I'm still quite like new to it. I but think. at World Champs in FL, your first one in Elite, you were pretty fast. Yeah. You got second, no? Third. Third. But I was within a couple of seconds with Rachel yeah. Man on that was cool. But again, I didn't expect anything. Like I was really ill the week before, like on antibiotics and everything. Yeah. So and I wasn't supposed to fly, but I did anyway. Okay. And uh, yeah, I didn't expect anything. I was like, I think at the top, I was just like Fuck okay. it. Yeah, <laughs> let's do this. Yeah. And when I look at you and I see your coach, I know Chris pretty well. Yeah. And your relationship with him is quite special, no? Because it yeah, feels like you, he knows you since you were so young. Yeah. And it's kind of part of your family because you actually do everything with your family. Yeah. Tony is Too your much. team manager. <laughs> yeah. Carlos is your brother and teammate. And he spends a lot of time with your boyfriend. Like it's all like a little yeah. bubble around you. And Chris is kind of part of the family oh for sure and even like my massage therapist like ah. and my mechanic we all just like okay. gel and how do you feel about that do you like it do yeah. you oh yeah well it's like so many people ask me like why haven't you gone to a big team or like yeah. what like why haven't you Couldn't because make sense. Yeah. because i could like it's not that it's not an option but i've got my winning formula like it takes a long time to figure that out and I feel like I, this is where I started and I built so much like relationships with sponsors, friends, family like we say and I don't, there's no one that I trust more than the people that I have on my team and to mm. know that, that like every step you take in a race weekend, to know that they've got your back like 100%, it just takes like so I much know. stress off your shoulders. But isn't it hard when you go to a race, you spend time with your family, when you come back home for, uh, from a race? You'll still spend time with the same yeah, person. Isn't, it's hard. Isn't it like tiring at that one point? Super tiring. Like, obviously, I love my dad so much. Yeah. Like, <laughs> he's done everything for me. But when we get home, I've said this before, it's like there's no off switch. Yeah. Like, it's just con like you can go home and like if you've had a bad race weekend or something, like you don't even get time to digest it before he's already like True. wants to talk about it again or wants to bring it up or like sometimes you just want to like. Chill. And I think chaos, I'm a lot older now, so I know how to be like, right, no. Like, yeah. we're not talking about this. Whereas chaos kind of gets involved with it and he likes to answer back and they're just like back and forth and me and mum are just like... <laughs> but it's the way we are. And it's family probably. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but it's pretty cool. Like, from the outside, it looks like you've been on the same program almost all your yeah. life. And even then, when we were 13, 14, yeah, no, for you sure. were still like, follow my dream. Like, it yeah. was, and now that you are 24, mm -hmm. did you reach your dreams or not yet? I don't know. That's a weird, that's a not, yeah, I don't know. I feel like I have, but I've got so much more. Like, I feel like I've only just like, I'm only on the like, edge of it and there's so much more there. For sure, for but sure. I feel like maybe that's just a feeling that like humans have like you just always want more so mm -hmm. i don't know i feel like i'm i'm happy with what i've got for sure like a hundred percent no that yeah like i'm satisfied are you satisfied yeah yeah for <laughs> sure no i'm like when i was a kid i was dreaming of a lot of things yeah. on the biking side and i was like oh if one day i'm a top 10 rider it's gonna be so <laughs> sick and then i got top 10 i was yeah. like wow if one day i'm on the podium it's gonna be yeah. insane and then podium whoa it's you know? weird now because like when you're not first it's like oh 
something's wrong. Yeah, it's but it's it's because you expect a lot from yourself yeah. and people also expect a lot. So you instead of being satisfied with like a fourth place or whatever, you start to be expecting more yeah, because so true. people expect more too. So you're like Yeah. And anyway, when I got eleventh in the quaddies, it's kind of okay. Like it's not where I want to be, but it was okay. And everyone was like, oh, what happened? <laughs> Are you, you okay? Know, you know, it was like, it's Did okay. Did you crash? It's okay, man. It's That's what I said to you. No, some, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you helped me a lot, actually, that I night. I did. That was, I'm pretty sure, Amory as well, every time I bet on you guys, you guys have won. Can you bet more on me on this? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I might want to give someone else a chance. <laughs> give that. No, but for sure, when Amory yeah. won Fort William, his first World Cup, Yeah. if you go back in, in the comments on a post from a certain brand okay. <laughs> that said who's going to win. I put Amory and Amory was like, ha, 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 thanks, but no. And then, <laughs> and then he won. yeah. And then yeah. he sent me a message. I'm like, thank you so much. Like he remembers. It's all thanks yeah. to you, man. It's crazy. <laughs> it's funny. But yeah, with the sponsors, you actually have, I felt for a long time, the same ones. Yeah. Like you were on Intense back in the day, a long time ago, but then now you have transitioned mm -hmm. for a long, lot of years. Oakley, Fox, yeah. Red Bull, like, how are you so good with keeping sponsors because <laughs> I'm not dealing it so much because the yeah. team takes care of it but you seem yeah. involved way more than any other riders almost yeah I just feel like you know riding riding and racing is my life that's what I do so why shouldn't I invest all my time and effort into them that's also giving me a chance to do what I want to do yeah so like I would hate like obviously I've got a manager and he helps me, but only in the past a, couple of years. A manager and, uh, outside yeah. your dad? Yeah. Or your dad? No, not my dad. Okay. Because yeah, that, that needed to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, yeah. <laughs> but um, no, so I just feel like. So he can find new outside ones, but once that's happened, I like to be the one that discusses things with them. And mm. I just feel like if you've got a real personal relationship, things can go so far, you can get so much done. And like Fox, my yeah. longest once at Oakley. Yeah. And Fox, yeah, I've been on them for, I don't even know, like, what, 12 years? I filmed with Mono, but like, <laughs> how, like 12 years ago, and I was on Fox then. It's crazy. Yeah. And Oakley. Yeah, and Oakley. Oakley sticker on you. Like yeah, so. mad. Nah, it's cool, and I feel like you, more and more, you can express yourself, like, through the kits. Yeah. You design the kits, no? Yeah, my kits, yeah. So that's pretty cool. That's mad. And I've got so many good ones that I can't wear now. <laughs> oh, can I have some maybe? Yeah, I'm not sure if you're fit, but... But it seems like you could... If you stop riding, I don't know when, but after mm. career, you have a lot of already things yeah, you can do. I think that's also something like in the back of your head. You're like, well, obviously, I went to school until I was 18, but I didn't do very well. Mm. And... But is, is that, it doesn't matter to be good at school. Like in, no. It's not because you're bad at school that you're going to miss life. No, and exactly. I feel like I put so much into what I love that I'm kind of guaranteed something back. Mm. Like I feel like even when I finish riding, racing, I would still want to be involved in the sport or with athletes in some sort. Okay. So like with Fox and like I'm getting more and more things to do, like testing stuff or like designing things and like, and the same with Oakley. Okay. And there's a lot of people that kind of, after a while, kind of are more flexible. Okay. And I think they, they, you earn their trust and they earn yours. And it's nice. It's really nice. Like, Fox is unreal. You know what it's like. You get fresh kit. I know. Like, I know. It, when you were a kid and you got, like, a new jersey. Like, I get that every time. I, like, Fox stuff. When, like, when we first got the Fox thing, I was like, Ooh. Yeah, I know. So much <laughs> stuff, good stuff. And it's, yeah, it's I know. pretty sick. But I feel yeah. like girls are better than every like boys at everything, because yeah. social media, yeah, sponsor relationship, like just interviews in general. Like We're you, just more emotional. We give more. Uh, I feel like you are more <laughs> involved and more just cautious about everything. And yeah, maybe stuff we like most of the. I don't know every relationship of the other boys with their sponsors yeah. or something. But it seems from my side that I'm struggling way more to be it's consistent. It's a language barrier, I think. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> but well, actually, most of my sponsors speak French. Like, they all... Oh, like, Vincent polite. is French from Fox. You know, everyone. Yeah. But, yeah. I don't well, know. Maybe we are more cautious. Like, my girlfriend, she's so good at everything. Like, she, <laughs> she plans everything. And, and I feel like Pompon. I know Pompon pretty well. And she's so good yeah. also. And pro, you know, like, 
well, I'm, and I get inspired by that. I'm like, yeah. okay, I have to be there. You know? So like we like we want to do more. Like for us, yeah. there's more than racing, but maybe there's fewer of us. I don't know. Maybe because it's so now that you bring that up, is it because it's a man's sport that you have more work to do? Because it's kind of a man's... Know. No, it is. Yeah, it is male-dominated, for mm. sure. Um, and I think you're right to say that because in the beginning... So going back to the sponsors, mm. the reason why FMD was created was because my dad didn't believe that I would get enough support as a girl okay. in the sport, which is, at the time, this was like 15 years ago, that's normal. So he created this... FMD for me to you know I to have people helping you yeah so that he could kind of bring chaos up and he just knew he thought that I wouldn't get a deal or anything because as a girl you just didn't especially back then like Emily Rago you had Sabrina Junior yeah. you got Rachel like it was hard and I remember at my first World Cup I crashed I got fourth at the top split and then crashed because we didn't have categories back yeah. then you remember yeah. and then in Fort William I came 20th yeah see <laughs> Like, I just qualified by like this much. Okay. So, it's taken me a long time and I think you do have to fight for your right, like in the sport. But I feel like now it's fine. But I feel like back then, like I feel it's way better now. But back then, yeah, I, I felt like I really had to kind of do something a bit different. Hence why I worked so much on my style. And like my dad used to put tape on the end of my bars. Really? So that my palms would like go outwards and my elbows would like go up. No way, I that's, swear. A, yeah. that's a good technique. I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it worked. Um, mm. So yeah, I feel like, because we were always fighting for our place. I but know. now I feel like our generation and like Chaos and my boyfriend, I go out riding with them and Vero yeah. and I was like gonna, our like, group. I, yeah. yeah, like there's no, we're not girls. Yeah, true. Like there's no like... You're a shredder more than... And, and, then, and then you do like stuff Girls would not do six years ago, seven yeah. years ago, because it but was... but they inspire us, but then they are aware. It's weird because they don't really say, oh, you're a girl, so don't do that. They would never do that. Like, Go on. And then, for example, when we're there for a long time, it, do, it takes us a lot longer, obviously, but they will encourage us. Never once have they like, been like, no, don't do that. Yeah. They would never. So I feel like it is getting there. For sure. So when you do all these little edits, do you feel like a free rider a little bit or what? Because you guys yeah. do like a lot of tricks and stuff. I'm like... Yeah, I, for me, it's so mad. Cause you do more, way more <laughs> than what I would do. I'm like, fuck. No, it's so new for me. Mm. And like, I think Vero's helped me a lot. Vero kind of... Veronique Sandler. Yeah, 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 yeah. She kind of opened up that, um, that lead way. You know, Casey Brown, I like, kind of opened up a, a passageway for women to be like, oh, we don't have to just be full on racers. Yeah. It's good because I, I used to, like, I met Vero maybe in New Zealand, I don't know, a long time ago. Yeah. When I first went there and she was just racing. Yeah. And then I didn't see her so much for, like, years. And, and then bam. when I saw her again, she was, she was way more, uh, yeah. like, committed in tricks. Like, yeah, and, she's and mad. followed, like, a lot it's of followers and stuff. Because, like, um, yeah, she, uh, it was the same with me because I used to know Vero when she raced. Mm -hmm. And then she kind of went away for a bit. And I think her boyfriend, Max, is um, he's super good at stuff like that. Like he hangs out with the 50th one crew. Okay. So I think it just like all of that. And I think her seeing that and the fact that she, you know, couldn't make a living racing, she's turned it around yeah. and she's now making a living doing something insane and new and cool. And it's made me think like, oh, I can do that. Like yeah. she's doing that. So I go around with her and like, I learn off of her and it makes me a better rider, like a better racer. Like it, it's mad, I think. I do sure. think a lot more people are kind of gelling together now. But I feel like it's a British thing too. Even though she's yeah. a Kiwi, she's well, a Kiwi. She lives, yeah, she's but a she Kiwi, lives in, but she lives in, in the yeah. UK, yeah. But I feel like all these style, like 521 boys, your brother, K, like they all like, it's a British yeah. style because it's the bike paths are a little bit like this and it's just the way of this, I feel like the spirit yeah. has always been. You can't just like punch laps out, you can't do that, yeah. so you just session. Yeah, you just but like, I never used to walk do up that. and then ride two turns. And yeah. then and it's, it's, it's good, like it's the kind of the roots of downhill, yeah. I think. And it's to see, like I want to do that. I want to do it more. Should come over. But I'm, I suck too much. <laughs> I suck way too much. You just try though. Yeah. <laughs> There'll be an edit Next coming edit, soon. yeah. <laughs> We've actually got an edit, the boys are in Morzine. Yeah. And f f every day they were like coming back with Cade. 
crashes like six times, massive crashes. I know, I've seen and, that. And like walks through the door, like limping, next day out again. But Kate is crazy. He yeah. has massive crashes and he's yeah. just... <laughs> yeah, so then, but it's bad because then I'm like, yeah, I'm tough. And then forward and bam, I'm like, oh. Yeah, yeah you don't want to get... <laughs> if you're a racer, pro, like you and me, like yeah. kind of at the top level, you don't want to get injured. I know, you would feel so shit. Yeah. Because it's kind of <laughs> not your main yeah. thing, you know? So. So yeah, coming back to the serious mm. uh, conversation. Um, what about the women's field? Because it's been a little bit. Even me, I've been like, ah, there's only two girls, three girls, mm. and then this year you get injured, uh, the pompon gets injured. There's like two top girls out, and there is actually Nina Hoffman, like some yeah. new girls coming. What do you think about the women's field now, and what's the difference between men and women? I think. With women, I think they've seen it as like an opportunity. What do you mean? Like, almost, it's opened up. Ah, yeah. And I feel like it's not because we're not there that they're getting there. I feel like they've seen it, so they're pushing harder. Okay. That more than what they would when we when we're there. I might be wrong, but I feel like they they're going pinned. Yeah. Like, yeah. They're going super fast, and I thought you know w if we weren't there, it would kind of be the same gaps, but the gaps are small. I know. Like, like super it, small. It might be a little bit annoying for you because the competition <laughs> comes, but it's good to no, see. No, it's like, cool. I find like, it really, Whoa. really cool. Yeah. And like, I, I was a bit worried leaving and I was like, oh, now two of us are out and maybe people will find it boring. Mm -hmm. But as you say, like Nina Hoffman is yeah. like, obviously what even Veronica and Monica, like all these women who like are kind of usually a bit on and off are just all of a sudden like, Bam, like we can do this. Yeah. And it's cool because maybe they needed that confidence level to. Yeah, maybe uh, like there was more doors open. Yeah, that's what There's I mean. There's two more doors open on the podium. So ra I think rather than, you know, seeing the same old faces every weekend, mm. and I think when we come back, I think it will be the same. I think it will be like they are now, and I think it will be hard. Yeah, it will be hard yeah, to. Yeah, for sure. Because the gaps, there's less place for, yeah. less room for mistakes now. Yeah. Where there was maybe two years ago, you could do. Kind of a big mistake yeah. and still end up second. Well, I remember even like when I was getting like what the podiums, I could have an average run and get fifth, and I can't do that anymore. Mm. Like, where was I with Chris? And Chris was like, I was like, I just don't understand. I had a really like not a bad run, but not a good, not run, a good <laughs> run. And I wasn't, I wasn't first. That was, that was it. I wasn't first. And I was like, I just don't understand. He was like, what? you think you can just win easy. Like you think you can ride down and just win. And it's so true because sometimes you think that you're riding good. True. And then you kind of, you're in this like element of, well, I can, I can win. I've done it, so I can win. And then you get That's stuck That's a human that. thing, yeah to, yeah, to think. And you kind of get relaxed and then everyone else is and you're just back. Yeah. And it's good because it brings you back down to earth. True. But I don't feel like I've never really been like, Big head. Yeah, yeah. ever. Because I think I've just witnessed things over the past where I don't want to be like that. Mm. So I kind of like every time I win, I just forget about it and move on. <laughs> That's done, <laughs> gone. It's sad to do though, because when you win something, you know, it's natural to be like, oh yeah. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and then you yeah. go to the, next, to the weekend, the next World Cup, yeah. and then you're like, I can do this again. But then, then it's way harder. <laughs> And you qualify, you know, yeah. it's like, yeah, whoa. And it's, it's yeah. like, yeah, no, it's That's true. why it's, it's good to be able to always, like I'm already last year, I feel, you forget year. and yeah. start over and be the same, like. But that's what I do. That's my approach. Okay. But I it's think. sad. Like I'm trying to do the same too, but it's so hard. You just like, because I see, I see a sports psychologist now. Ah. Yeah. That's since the first when? time that everyone's heard it. Um, whoa. Since, since this winter. Yeah. Okay. Um, Why did you feel the need? I didn't feel the need. <laughs> so just for it was just um, somebody suggested it, and loads of people suggested it before. And obviously, I was so over the past couple of years, I've won the most World Cup, and for me that was huge because I didn't notice, I didn't know until somebody pointed it out. Okay. And I feel like it was hard, like you say, to win and win again and again and again. I felt like they were random wins. Okay. I didn't feel like they were, obviously you can never predict them, but 
I work just as hard at every World Cup and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Like you couldn't explain? Yeah. And I feel like, and at Worlds last year, like, God knows what happened there. I know. So I was like, you know what, I've tried most things, so why wouldn't I try something new? And uh, yeah, he's been a huge help. So since when so did he you... Was say, this is what I was going to say to yeah. you. You can't expect anything. Because the moment you start expecting, you set yourself up for failure. Whoa! Yeah. Right down. Not that you're going to fail. <laughs> no, 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 it's true. But, you know, you, you put expectations on yourself and you, then pressure comes and then, yeah. and then most of the time... Like you have to success or you're disappointed. Yeah, you either do that or you're disappointed. So if you just set yourself like mini goals and you, you think, oh, it'd be nice to do that, then... But that's why sometimes it's hard to set up goals because you don't want to mm. put a number on, some, on something. Mm. You don't want to be like, I want to win... Yeah, but that's why you've got to set this. goals on things that you can control. True. Because you can't control your result. I know. So why don't you, I don't know, control like what you eat and then how much effort you put into your training session, how many runs you're going to do. Like as long, and then, because for me, when I feel in control, that's when I feel good. When I feel like I can control something, it's something. And then if you've done all of that, anything that slips, you feel like, oh, it's okay because I've done everything I can. Yeah. So that doesn't, I'll deal with that when it comes. But you cannot be in the zone if you're out of control. Mm -mm. If you didn't anticipate anything and stuff, you can be in the zone. So yeah. it's, for sure, it's the approach. See, I was talking to Cade about the zone and he was like, nah, don't like the zone. <laughs> what? I was like, but what? <laughs> the zone is where this shit happens. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. It's where you can kind of let go and just not think can happen yeah, to you for much. Sure. See, I was going to ask you, at the top of races... Like at the fi before like, the final run? Yeah, like start gate. Yeah? Like, what goes through your head? Well, it depends a lot in the ra at like what race, because depending on the week you had and stuff, the state of mind can be different. Yeah. You can be like, I was in Lens High last year, World Champs. I was like, I'm going to win this. Because I know everything went so good. Yeah. But in the past, I've had this, the same feeling. So you do think, oh, I'm going to win? Yeah, because I feel like I crashed in the sitting run and I was still like really close and I was yeah. like, I can do this and I never really have this feeling yeah. but when I have it most of the time I crash so I knew yeah that's what I thought so yeah. it's like a last minute kind of you have 10 minutes where from warm up to the mm -hmm. start Gate, yeah. that you actually sit alone in the world with your mechanic and you just do you uh, like uh. that moment? no no I'm scared like see I love that moment that's my favourite part like I don't know like Why? start gate yeah but start gate but not Oh, I like the, the whole minutes. preparation. Because I feel like you're just questioning a lot of things, sometimes random. And when I, I was talking about Lenzerheide, Lenzerheide, I knew I've, had, I've been in this state of mind before, like Leo Gang in 14, yeah. for example, where I crashed in the last turn. Yeah. And I, I just felt too good that I was not taking enough, paying enough attention to some details, and I ended up crashing. See, I feel like that. But again... That's another thing that a sports psychologist will help you with. Yeah. No, but I, I have one. I've oh. been working, <laughs> but it's, <laughs> but it's, it's for me. It's natural to make mistakes like this. But for example, yeah. Lenzerheide, I knew I had to set it down a little bit, and be a little bit less attacking yeah. than what I would have done, and it almost cost me the win. But I was so satisfied with my run and stuff that it was even with a third pace, I would have been happy. Yeah. But it's so hard to. There is, I don't know the exact recipe for the perfect mindset. I don't mindset. think no one knows. And when I'm at the gate, I just think about, I try, try to loosen myself up and think about the track a little bit and just, okay, <laughs> and then you just go for it. Yeah. But yeah, sometimes I've been like Maribor. I was not so much in the mood. I was like, I don't know if I can do this. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to try to push more than expected because I didn't feel so... Punchy and stuff. Yes. Yeah, and then I got to the bottom and I was like, I don't know how I did that. It was such such a good run. Mm. And then it's hard to explain. And th this is what you want to explain to be able to reproduce it, but it's not explainable. Yeah, you can never like reproduce the same. No. Like you could never look at a run and be like, or like how you felt and be like, that's how I'm gonna feel. Mm. Like it just doesn't happen. And that's yeah. That's where it's, you have to create a favorable environment. Exactly. You need to get try and. Do your best to get to how you felt. Yeah. Like, because, like I said to you, I like feeling in control in what I'm doing. 
So if I can control everything over the weekend, like what time I've got to be at a certain place, all this, I feel good about it. So yeah. when I um, and when I've done everything I can, like and I'm I'm sat in the gate and I'm like there is nothing more that I could have done, and that's when I win. But you know that some riders, like this is the approach of a guy like Nico Vuyas had, yeah. and some riders, I feel like it's the opposite. Oh, yeah, they kind of they kind of <laughs> leave some stuff on the side, yeah, to have some little excuses. Ah, uh, yeah, but it's. I didn't try hard enough, you know, like, and, that, but and that's... But in that case, you're not going to win. Yeah, but sometimes they want to win, but they also prepare an excuse, you know? And, and I've been, be fair, I've been like that I before. To, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've been like that. Ah, it's okay. You can't have excuses. Because I was scared of failing with trying my hardest. Yeah, yeah. And now... No, I'm, no, it's true. Mm. For sure. I've been there. Mm. It's weird, huh? Yeah, yeah. But the mental in downhill is so important, I think. On like 99.9%. Mm. Everyone can, well, most people can ride a bike fast. Like all you top guys. Yeah. Like if I was to watch you, no difference. And that, like race day, it comes to, yeah, who's strongest yeah. up here. Not in the shoulders, not in the legs. I know. In the brain. Mm. Insane in the brain. But um, <laughs> one last question, I think. Because I've, th I've always thought until I saw you race world champs that you were French. So are you French or British? <laughs> when was that? <laughs> like when we were kids. That you must was, have been ages you were, ago. You were speaking French, you were living in you France. You thought I was French? I was like, yeah, she's French. And then one but time you show up. We've known each other for so long. Great Britain, I was like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> and then... You, yeah, because I've known you for... Years, 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 years. Like yeah. we, we met the first time maybe in when we were... I was 13 and you were 12 or something like this. In yeah, Pila, right. I think. No. Or racing like I... No, 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 no. It would have been way younger than that. Mum Avalanche was... Yeah. We were way younger. And then you like were speaking 10. French to me. And yeah. then and your brother well, was speaking I, I'm French. I'm English. I'm definitely English. <laughs> okay. But, yeah. I just grew up in, well, I grew up in Croydon in London for eight years. And then mum and dad decided to pull the plug because it wasn't a very nice place. Okay. Uh, a lot of, like, crime going on. And mum and dad had been on holiday to Leger and really liked it. Mm. And they risked it all. Um, not for riding. A lot of people thought it was for riding, but no, not at all. We just, um, they bought a rundown, a okay. real rundown chalet, did that up, and then they got people to come and stay, like pro riders, and that's how I got into it, because okay. I think the, per the first pro rider was Nigel Page. Mm. Okay. And he came with... Long time ago then. Yeah, I would have been like eight. He okay. came with his uh, girlfriend at the time, who was Vanessa Quinn. And I had seen her the year before win world champs in the J. Okay. And I was just like, <laughs> so good. yeah. And I ran to get my T-shirt that I got signed by her, and was like, "This is you." And she was like, "Cool." <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, then I got the same bike as her. Like I was a massive fan of her. Like she managed to get, like her and my mum and dad and Nigel managed to get like a little mini replica. No way. Yeah, it was super like so lucky. Super Spoiled cool. girl. Fuck. Yeah, <laughs> but it got stolen. No yeah, way. Yeah, it didn't you don't even take care of your stuff. Come on. I didn't leave it out. Somebody right. broke into our house. Okay. That's fair. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So, and then I went to school in France and obviously learned how to speak French and then met you. You told me a secret one time. You, you, French boyfriends were way cooler than English boyfriends. That's not true. I said the opposite <laughs> of that. <laughs> you were just looking for a chance. I know. You're I know. like, oh, I could stink my way through. Uh, what? What the fuck? <laughs> That's a lie. That's that a lie. is a lie. But um, yeah, I know. But um, yeah, I think we're done. <laughs> He's speechless. <laughs> I never, I never tried for the recall. I never tried hard. Thank you, Tani. It's been a good chat. It's we sweated a lot. As you can see, some water, a lot of sweat yeah. coming out of your chair. But no. that's a little payback. I hope we'll see you sooner than World Champs on the track. But hopefully you do some good content and... Yeah, I will. And yeah, enjoy. Thanks for having me. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, give me a... No. Oh, I'm so sweaty. <laughs> yeah, see? <laughs> Even me, I'm good. <laughs>